2,000 years, men and women of every nation, tribe, race, and tongue have sought to follow after Jesus' command to discover, develop, and deploy disciples. To not just be disciples themselves, but to make disciples who in turn can make other disciples. But what does that look like? How do we relationally take Jesus in all the places where we live, work, and play? What does it truly mean to... When you came in this morning, you should have received a devotional book. If you didn't, as Pastor Scott said, please get one on your way out. We are beginning a conference-wide initiative to teach y'all how to be good disciples and how to disciple others. Modeling what Jesus did. When Jesus walked this earth, he had people that he walked with daily. And he, he poured himself into those people. In the hope that they too would then pour themselves into others. We know Jesus had 12 of the insiders. And if those 12 discipled 12 that meant there were 144 new disciples. And if we disciple whatever number of people and they go out and disciple, there will be multiplication within the kingdom. Using the tools that we will learn through this 43-day devotional, we hopefully can set the world on fire. Just doing what Jesus did. We used to say, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Well, you just have to look at the Word of God and you'll see what He did. And we can do the same. So you're invited to join us on an exciting journey of discovery. Follow is designed to help disciples of Jesus discover the potential that God sees in us and then, <clears throat> excuse me, begin to use the, the tools that we learn from this study. And listening to the Holy Spirit, see the potential in others that we can pour into them. And if we do that, we will all grow spiritually and personally. How many of you like to grow in your faith? Amen. Amen. You may not realize this, but every week we address three different groups of people. Not only here in church, but every day of your life you meet that same three groups of people. There are those who are believers, yet they really haven't been discipled. They're, they're still babies in Christ. And that's not what we are to do. We are to grow in our faith. We are to grow and become more like Jesus. The second group is those who have been discipled. But for whatever set of reasons, they have walked away from the faith. And thirdly, there are those who are non-believers, many of which are curious, many of which would like to know what makes us different, assuming we are living differently than the rest of the world, church. I just want to bring that to your attention. Again, this 43-day devotional book doesn't, well, actually it starts a Monday, Monday a week from tomorrow. The first actual day of doing that study is to be the 3rd of October. We're doing it a week early because next Sunday, number one, I won't be here, I'll be with the youth. Pastor Dave will be teaching here in the morning, and in, we still have the park service, the last of the park services. So we're not going to begin we're beginning today, and then we're going to skip a week, and then we'll do the second week of it, the week of October 2nd. You got that? That's good, because I was confused. <laughs> if you're like me, I couldn't wait. I've been into the book already. I teach a Bible study up on my porch during the week, and we've already been using the book. So do what you want to do, but... Each week's lessons coincide with what the message will be on that particular Sunday morning. 
So you're hearing the message this morning. You could go through week one now, and it would be fresh in your mind. So that's up to you to do. This is also a great resource for small group leaders, Sunday school classes. Individuals uh, can use this resource to not only strengthen their faith, but to lead others in, into uh, an increase in knowledge while they grow closer to Christ. For those of you watching online, obviously you're not here this morning. You couldn't pick up one of the books physically. I would recommend you take your phone out of your pocket and take a picture of that screen that's up there right now. And you'll be able to go to that website and download a PDF version of the same thing that we have in our hands here. And again, we'll keep that on there for just a second or two, but it would be good to take a picture of it. And uh, while we're waiting for them to get that information, the, the key thought today is that all wisdom and understanding comes from knowing God. Do we understand that? All wisdom and understanding comes from knowing God. We need to hear God through his word, through prayer, through the Holy Spirit. And as the Holy Spirit reveals God's word, and we see how that word applies to our lives, because the hearing the word doesn't do any good unless it's applied. Do we understand that? Seeing how the word is applied in our lives, then we should seek to live for him, to live out his word, to become more attuned to the Holy Spirit <clears throat> and to listen intently for the voice of God. How many of you listen for the voice of God? Sometimes I have too much to say and I don't get to hear it. I was so much appreciated Kay Harold telling me, you know, I've been speaking to the Lord a lot, but I've been waiting and I've been hearing from him. That's what we need to do. We need to pray. We need to read. We need to study. But we need to listen for his voice. Because the more we seek God and the more that we understand Him, the more we will discover the potential that He sees in us and in those around us. You may think yourself unworthy. But God sees very differently than we do. He created you for a specific purpose. And if he created you for that purpose and he's called you to that purpose and you do what he's called you to do, he's going to make sure you have everything you need to do it. Amen. I'm going to begin now with our scripture reading for today. It comes from Job chapter 28. I'm going to ask you if you would to stand with me as we read the word of God. <clears throat> Father, we ask your blessing upon your word. I pray, Lord, that... As I begin to read this word, you would open our hearts and minds. I pray, Father, that you would help us to set aside all distractions. Lord, that we would just focus on you and this precious word that you've given us and that we would come to an understanding of what it means to us and apply it in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Amen. People know where to mine silver and how to refine gold. They know where to dig iron from the earth and how to smelt copper from rock. They know how to shine light in the darkness and explore the furthest regions of the earth as they search in the dark for ore. They sink in a mine shaft into the earth far from where anyone lives. They descend on ropes swinging back and forth. Food is grown on the earth above, but down below the earth is melted as by fire. Here the rock contains precious lapsus lazuli and the dust, con and the dust contains gold. These are treasures no bird of prey can see, no falcon's eye can observe. No wild animal has walked upon these treasures. No lion has ever set his pole there. People know how to tear apart flinty rocks and overturn the roots of mountains. They cut tunnels in the rocks and uncover precious stones. They dam up the trickling streams and bring to light the hidden treasures. But the people know where to find wisdom. Do the people know where to find wisdom? Where can they find understanding? No one knows where to find it. For it is not found among the living. It is not here, says the ocean. Nor is it here, says the sea. It cannot be bought with gold. 
It cannot be purchased with silver. It's worth more than all the gold of Ophir, greater than precious onyx or lapis lazuli. Wisdom is more valuable than gold and crystal. It cannot be purchased with jewels mounted in fine gold. Coral and jasper are worthless in trying to get it. The price of wisdom is far above rubies. Precious peridot from Ethiopia cannot be exchanged for it. It's worth more than the purest gold. But do people know where to find wisdom? Where they can find understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all humanity. Even the sharp-eyed birds in the sky cannot discover it. Destruction and death says we've heard only rumors of where wisdom can be found. God alone understands the way to wisdom. He knows where it can be found. For he looks throughout the whole earth and sees everything under the heavens. He decided how hard the winds should blow and how much rain should fall. He made the laws for the rain and laid out the path for lightning. Then he saw wisdom and evaluated it. He set it in place and examined it thoroughly. And this is what he says to all of humanity. The fear of the Lord is true wisdom. The fear of the Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil is real understanding. Once again, precious Father, we thank you for your word. There is a wealth of information in your word. It is truly the instruction manual for all of us. And we pray, Lord, that we will act upon your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. To me, the key verse here is verse 28. I'll read this in the ESV for you. It says, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to turn away from evil is understanding. In Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The what? The fear of the Lord, the holy reverence of God, the awe that we were singing about this morning. I don't know about you, but when I think of my God, I'm just all struck. He is so powerful, I can't even begin to imagine. And he blesses me so greatly, I, I just can't thank him enough. But he is the one who, when we respect him, when we fear him, when we live in awe of him, he is the one that gives us that wisdom. It goes on to say, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. I say, praise God. This morning, we're going to look at four areas. Number one, that all wisdom and understanding comes from Him. Secondly, that God's work is meant to change us when we take it in. God's Word, that is. Thirdly, we are to consider to, let's, do, let's see this. Understand that consider in the original Greek means to literally look at what you hear. And lastly, if we are all in, then we will be blessed like we are all in. How many of you are all in for Jesus? I remember years ago going to a Carmen concert and he did a song, A to J, Addicted to Jesus. I don't know about you, but if I'm going to be addicted to anything, I want it to be Jesus. All wisdom and understanding comes from knowing God. Job began chapter 28 with a discourse about mining ore in the darkness of caves where there was no bird or beast that has ever been. He said that man locates the sources of rivers. He brings earth's, to, uh, brings earth's secrets to light. He discovers a way to mine the ore and refine it into precious metal. But then he goes on to say that the precious metal, those gems that men have discovered, are, are nothing compared to the great gift of wisdom from God. That there is nothing on earth as valuable as that wisdom. And that wisdom can be obtained only by that reverence of God. 
God alone is the giver of wisdom. Believer's Bible commentary says, the path of wisdom is not found easily. It cannot be discovered in the land of the sea, or the land or the sea. It cannot be purchased, nor can an adequate price be placed on it because its price is far above rubies and topaz and cannot be valued in pure gold. Wow, what a precious gift wisdom is. And Brother James tells us that if we lack wisdom, all we have to do is ask him and he will give us wisdom. As long as we're not double-minded. And if we're living in awe of God, we're not going to be double-minded, are we? Because he will be the primary focus of our lives. We're told that if we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, everything else falls into place. So when we have a proper understanding of who God is and who we are, we should be bowing our heads and our hearts in reverent fear, in awe, such that will cause us to see our lives in proper perspective. I know many of you see yourselves as unworthy. You look in the mirror and you don't like what you see. But God created you to be the individual that you are. And he loves you just the way you are. You may see yourself as too thin or too fat. You might not like your hairstyle. But God created you that way. And he wants to use you to reach others if you will allow him to. When you are seeking him first in your life, when you're allowing the Holy Spirit to reign and rule in your life, and you need to do that. You know, when you ask Jesus to be your Savior, the Holy Spirit comes within you to counsel you, to give you strength to give you power, to give you gifts. But unless you allow him to do that, it's not going to happen. So if you allow the Holy Spirit, he will give you wisdom and understanding. It will flourish in you. And he will clarify all truth in you. We live in a world that does not believe in absolute truth, but there is absolute truth. His name is Jesus. That truth is available for every one of us, but we need to seek after that truth. And when we have the wisdom of God, that truth is revealed to us. Without that, we're stuck in our own opinions and our own experiences. And listen to me, I don't want to be in my own opinions and my own experiences because my opinions stink. And I don't want to go through some of the circumstances that I've gone through in my life. I don't want those, those experiences in my life anymore. I want whatever God wants for me. Amen. So, please do yourself a favor. Get to know God. A severe thunderstorm continues for your location. Thank you. Get to know God in a much deeper way. Get to know Him as more than this ethereal being that we read about, that we sing about. There is a difference between standing here and singing and standing here and worshiping folks. Amen. He literally drove me to my knees today. I am so grateful for him. We need to worship him in spirit and in truth. We still have to live in this world. But we have something that the world doesn't have. We have that Holy Spirit in us. And if we allow him to, God will allow us to change the world. One person at a time. We need to study his word. We need to pray. We need to seek his face. We need to set aside some quiet time so we're hearing from him. We need to read and see what he's done in other occasions that we read about in the Bible. 
I'm not sure that's what I wanted to say. But we see by example how we should act when we read through the Word of God. We see what we should do. So we need to follow His lead. All wisdom and understanding comes from knowing God. But it will not be any good if we do not apply it to our life. Amen? Secondly, God's word is meant to change us when we take it in. In the same way that when a lamp is brought into a dark house to provide light, when we turn it on, we are to hide his word in our hearts so that his word becomes visible in our lives, so that we carry the light of the world to a very dark world that we live in. You see, God does not want any of us to be in the dark spiritually. Jesus is the light of the world. And if you are a follower of Jesus, I think of Tommy Tenney's book, God Chasers. If you chase after Jesus, people are going to see that light in you. My wife might kick me. I just said gonna. People are going to see the light of Jesus in you. And what does the light do? It attracts people, doesn't it? There was a time in my life when I was attracted to darkness because I didn't know the light. And then there was a time in my life that I was attracted to darkness because I was running from the light. But ultimately, I ran towards the light. And if you've got the light, people will run towards you. He does not want us to be in the dark concerning his ways or his heart. And he wants us to be enlightened and let our light shine before others. That would have been a really good place for an amen. Now, I don't want to force it out of you. Hang on. Amen. All right, there we go. I have a call to action for you this morning. If you love Jesus and continuously glean wisdom and understanding from him, then you are walking in his light. So please share the light and be the light to our dark, dark world. That's my call to action for you. Just be the light. Can you say that? I want to be the light. Be the light. All right. All wisdom and understanding comes from knowing God. God's word is meant to change us when we take his word in. And now we are going to go to the scripture from Mark chapter 4, 21 through 25. You will note that this is in red letters. These are the words of Jesus. Mark wrote, he said to them, and then recorded the words of Jesus. Do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? That wouldn't do a whole lot of good, would it? Instead, don't you put it on its stand? Well, this made me come up with a little word picture. You know, beside our bed, we've had lights sitting on a bedside table. And it helps when you're trying to read, but if that light is not where it should be, if I were to set that down on the floor, I'd probably have a hard time reading. So we need to put that light on its stand. For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. Do you have ears to hear? Are you hearing this? Are you considering this? Because now it says, consider carefully what you hear. Consider carefully what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you and even more. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. Our third point is that word, consider. That consider in the original Greek means to literally look at what you hear. Well, Pastor Larry, how can I look at what I hear? Well, we're learning the value of listening to God's voice, right? So now we're asked to consider what it is that we hear. That word consider carries with it the idea of taking responsibility and making something happen as a result of what we hear. Do we understand that? 
So if we really see something and we understand it, we're going to respond, won't we? Jesus often spoke in parables. See if I can give you some clarification here. He spoke in parables, in word pictures, so that people who were not educated or hadn't been familiar with the word were able to understand what he was saying. He's painting word pictures. Several years ago, Mike Vandling and I had a computer business, and we wanted all of the employees to make sure that they remembered the names of our clients. Because how many of you know scripture says that a man's name is the most important thing to him? So we sent them to a Dale Carnegie course, and I went along because I wanted to see how this works. If you're from Marysville, you know the name Chicky Chop. Well, Mike's wife is a Chicky Chop, and I think she has 14 or 15 siblings. I forget how many there are. It just happened that Francis or Frank worked for us. And so what I learned was how to remember his name as, let's stop here for a second. When I was growing up and during the summers, I lived on the farm. We often went out, picked out a chicken and prepared it for lunch or supper. And I remembered his name by chicken chop. That's, that, listen. It is effective. It is proven. It works. And so if you're creating word pictures for people, they will retain what you are telling them. And if you're showing them by your lifestyle, they'll retain even more. So I, I you know, feel free to create word pictures in your mind as you contemplate God's word and while presenting God to others. It is always good when you're reading the word of God to read it out loud. It is always good when you're reading the word of God to read it out loud. You're hearing it, but while you're hearing it, now you can begin to paint word pictures. I was thinking as I was reading that about the lamp and it came to my mind about the lamp in my house and that's how that all came together. We need to do everything we can to make the Word of God understandable to those whom we are speaking to. In the first service this morning, I read scripture from the ESV, which is great. It's a great scripture. But this is so much easier to read what I read today. It's, it's more in a modern day understanding, modern day language that we can understand better. So word pictures help us grab a hold of God's word. And when we grab a hold of it, we should grasp it more deeply so that we retain it, retain it, that we can impart it to others and we can apply it in our lives. The more we seek God and understand him, the more we will discover the potential that he has given us, that he sees in us, and the more we can see the potential in others. The more we understand him and his will for us, the more apt we are to fully give ourselves to him. How many of you just really want to fully give yourself to Jesus? He will turn us away from our worldly ways and our attitudes and our actions will follow. We will be different. We need to be fully sold out to Jesus. We need to be all in when it comes to living out our faith before others. So once again, we have learned that all wisdom and understanding comes from knowing God. That God's word is meant to change us when we take it in. That we need to consider, we need to look at what we hear and hide it in our hearts that we can share it with others. And fourthly, if we're all in, then we will be blessed like we are all in. When you leave this place today, when you leave the sanctuary of God, you are going out of this building as disciples of Christ. And just as he told his disciples to go 
into all the world and preach the good news, just as he told them just to go into their backyard and tell others, he tells you the same thing. You're going into a world of sin, and that world wants to suck you in. It doesn't want you arise, rising above the world. The devil is very wily. He's very good at what he does. And so we need to make sure that we have this firm foundation so that we can show others by our lives, by our actions, and teach others by the knowledge that we retain when they're written in our heart. When the word is written in our hearts. Lastly, Matthew chapter 10, verse 16 says this. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. There's a word picture for you, isn't it? Sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. When I was saved, my life was changed. It was a 180 degree change in my life. And I became innocent again. The words and actions that were in my life before my salvation were gone. I don't use those choice words anymore. And I kind of cringe when I hear Christians that do, but I hear Christians all the time that use those words. We're supposed to be innocent, but we're also to be as wise as a serpent or as sly as a fox. To be wise as serpents, we need to what? Come on, we just learned this. Where does that wisdom come from? We need to fear the Lord. We're just going right back to the beginning here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So in order to be wise as serpents, we must have God first. Does that make sense? Okay. He's sending us out as sheep in the midst of wolves. And believe me, folks, when you walk out this door, you are a sheep in the midst of wolves. But if you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. You love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know that keep the main thing the main thing thing. If you are doing that and you're seeking him first, you have the wisdom that you need to carry the word into all the world. Given to you by the Holy Spirit. So love him. Seek him. Revere him and you will have godly wisdom that will also protect you as you learn to become a better disciple and as you reach out to disciple others. Now, if we refuse, if we say, you know what, God, I hear your word, but I'm not going to do what it says. And believe me, a lot of people do that. We're, we're making our own choice. Or, or perhaps we just don't get it. But what we just read in Scripture was, if that's the case, even what we have is going to be taken from us. I want to grow in Him. I want more of Him, not less of Him. And God leaves room for us to grow deeper with Him. He allows us to choose to go without Him. But the consequences of losing everything is our choice if we choose not to look at if we choose not to consider what we hear from God. So, just as a recap, all wisdom and understanding comes from God. God's word is meant to change us when we take it in. Consider literally means to look at what you hear. Let's begin to paint those word pictures as we're reading the word of God and as we're trying to impart that word of God using word pictures, using parables to those that don't understand, those who do not understand. And we are, if we're all in, then we will be blessed as 
if we're all in. I'll finish with this. Luella read the message. She read the first draft of it anyway. It's been gone, gone through several entities, iterations. Let's go there. It's gone through several iterations. But her observation was this. She said, to follow sounds easy, but it's the most difficult thing for us to do. Our nature is to do our own thing, especially guys. We want to do our own thing. We don't want to be told what to do. We don't like to follow. But if we don't learn to follow, then our own thing may destroy us. Just something to think about. Thank you, sweetheart. As you read through your devotional this week, there are a couple of different things. First of all, you're going to learn to just stop. You'll be reading from Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 18. Then you learn to be still. Well, he says, be still and know that I am God, right? So it's important that we learn to be still. Thirdly, we will be available. We will learn to be available. Then we will learn to surrender. We will learn how to tune in. We will learn how to clarify the word of God. And we will learn how to let it sink in. Again, you've got your studies. I encourage you to read through them. I encourage you to study that book that you have. And over the next 43 days, you'll see a change not only in yourself and your attitude, but in those around you also. Amen.